For many years I have been using storage attached network devices to save and back up my data. Over this time I found that I did need to increase the storage capacity of my NAS. I decided to use an 8-bay Synology disk station. My plan was to populate it immediately with 8 10 terabyte drives and also 2 SSDs. The SSDs are NVMe, these will be 500 gigabyte each. The hard drives I've chosen were Seagate Ironwolf, now these are specifically made for a NAS. The Synology disk station is the DS1821+. Plus. Needless to say, both the drives and the NAS came extremely well packed and protected. Both the drives and the NAS are readily available on either Amazon or eBay. Shop around to get the best deal. There are plenty of them out there at this time. I will leave links in the description below where I got my drives and NAS from. Everything you need to set up your drives or the NAS can be found inside the boxes. Although I selected the Synology 8-bay NAS, these are made from 2-bay upwards. This will depend upon your need to the type or the amount of bays that you require. One good feature here is that you can increase the capacity by using dual DX517 expansion devices. Underneath the flap can be found the 4GB memory module that is also provided with this NAS. This can be increased to 32GB in two 16GB modules. The installation guide is in picture format, also has QR codes for your mobile phone for iOS and Android, also PC client web browser URLs. A push and release locking system is used on each of the hard drive bays. This makes putting in or removing the hard drives extremely easy. With the drive bays removed it will give you access on the left hand side to the two SSD drive slots to accept the M.2s. 2280s NVMe cache. In my case I'm using 500 gigabyte per slot. These will only go in one way. They push in on an angle and then pushed and clicked into place. The clip on the top holds them in position. The connectors for each of the drives can be found in the back of the main unit. Behind the vented circuit board are two giant fans. These are designed to keep the interior and hard drives cool when in full operational use. One extremely nice feature of this NAS is that when fitting the SATA drives to the bays no tools are required. When fitting the hard drive into the holder the holes on the hard drive will marry up with those on the holder. The two plastic pins on the clip will hold the drives in place. There is soft rubber around each of the holes. This will help eliminate any vibrations from the hard drive when in use. The only time that you would need to use a screwdriver is if you are fitting SSDs. They do provide you with the screws to do this. When fitting the hard drive into the bracket, ensure that the circuit board connectors are pointing to the rear. Normally the circuit board is face down and the holes should line up. If they don't line up you may have the hard drive upside down. Take your time when fitting these. The clips should fit in easy and snap into position when correct. Remember both the holder and the clip are made of plastic so there's no need to force anything. Everything should fit correctly, snugly and tight. Each of the bays are numbered from 1 to 8. Now what I did myself, I numbered also each of the hard drives from 1 to 8. You do not need to do this, I just did this for my own convenience. If I ever had to take any of the drives out for any reason, at least they're numbered and will go back into the same position that they came from. Slide each of the hard drives in turn and lock into position. I found pushing the top a little bit then using the lever to finish off and lock. Inside your box you will find a couple of keys for locking each of the bays. These would mainly be locked just to stop accidental opening of any of the bays. Even though that each of the bay is hot swappable, it is possible to open and close while switched on. But having them all locked saves that temptation or any accidents of them undoing. The mains connector can be found on the rear. Good space between each of the drives and a wall is essential for airflow. A bay for a 10 GBE card. 
There are two expansion unit slots for the DX517s. There are four Ethernet connectors, a hole for the reset button and three USB ports. Another USB port can be found on the front. As expected, underneath and through each of the hard drives there is very good airflow from the fans. To the left of the power button is the status and alert LEDs and to the right of the power button is the LAN indicator LEDs. The AC mains input can be between 120 and 230 volts, either 50 or 60 hertz. Depending upon where you order your NAS from, you will be provided with the correct mains lead. The mains socket on the back of the NAS has a deep recess. This stops any issues or problems with knocking the mains lead out when in operation. You are provided with two RJ45 leads. I only used one of the Ethernet connectors to connect onto my switch. Do a final check that everything is in place or plugs and sockets and then press the on and off button once. When you start up your NAS for the first time it will take some time for it to initialise so be patient. I left mine booting up until all the LEDs on each of the drive bays came on. With your computer on the same network as the NAS, type in find.synology.com. When the enter key is pressed, a search for each of the Synology devices that you have will be shown. In my case, I only have the one, so I simply press connect. Here you can see it found the disk station, the DS1821+. Plus. It will show you the IP address along with other information about the NAS. When the connect button is clicked, the installation of the disk station manager will start and take place. Simply follow all the instructions on creating the administration account for this Synology NAS. You can, at this stage, set up a quick connect, which would allow you access to your NAS via the internet. Personally, I will not be setting up access via the internet. This will be done on the home network system only. There is a massive amount of information on YouTube with regards to setting up your Synology NAS for the first time. I'm sure you will, like myself, be looking at many videos on the subject of your NAS and how to set it up. But I will leave some links in the description below on how to set up your NAS that have been done by other people which are extremely good. If you are going to use a shelf to put your NAS onto, remember a NAS is quite heavy, especially when populated with 8 drives. Before you ask, is a NAS quiet? No, you get fan noises. Remember there are two fans here trying to keep the NAS cool. My fans are set to cool and they're still noisy at that as you can hear now. I hope you found this information of use to you. Thank you for watching.